Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. A very good afternoon welcome to crash course on solid states now this particular video will be really helpful for uh, those of you who are preparing for entrance exams or those of you who have exams of solid state like academic exams so i've written down all the basic formulas and uh, i'll be explaining each and everything what is important what is not for interest from entrance exam point of view as well and from academic point of view so now let's just begin because i didn't write it down this is your simple cubic this is your uh, bcc and this is your fcc so in packing fractions simple cubic is 52 percent uh, bcc 68 percent and fcc 74 percent this is packing fraction sometimes generally uh, some simple question can be asked uh, what is the packing fraction of a face centered uh, you know system and they can give you some molecule right so they can ask you that what what is the packing fraction of that particular molecule and if you know that molecule is face centered and you can write the correct answer is 74 percent right uh, then we talk about relation between edge length and radius so for simple cubic the relation is radius is equal to 2a where a is nothing but your edge length edge of a cube like your uh, cube has uh, like it has an edge right and the edge uh, all the edges are equal in size uh, so uh, so you can write equal in length sorry so you can write it as a so radius of that cube is equal to 2 into the edge length right similarly for bcc the relation is r equal to root 3a by 4 and for fcc the relation is r equal to root 2a by 4 so generally sometimes what happens is the question is directly asked that uh, given the edge length of a uh, fcc uh, lattice uh, what is the um, radius all right so generally a simple question can also be asked sometimes they can mix up two questions so here i have given you density this is another formula for finding density of a cube so density is equal to z into m where z is nothing but the number of atoms in a in a crystal in in the crystal right so if it's simple if if it's simple cubic then the number of atoms is one if it's uh, body centered the number of atoms are two and if it's face centered the number of atoms are four so it has one two and four just remember this so the z value is the number of atoms so if you, it if it is given that the lattice is face centered then z will be four m is nothing but the molecular weight of the crystal m is nothing but the molecular weight right then a is the edge length that i have discussed and na is the avogadro's number so if you if you put up all the value you'll get value of density so sometimes questions are put up where you have been given density you have been given the type of crystal right you have been given the molecular weight and you have been given the avogadro number so then you'll have to find out the value of a and from the value of a then you'll have to determine the value of r so this is a numerical kind of a question a, a, a quite lengthy question but a simple one right so questions can be framed in this way this, these kind of questions are particularly important for exam point of view like they'll give you fcc centered uh, cubic lattice they'll give you density they will give you the molecular weight they'll give you the avogadro number obviously you know the avogadro number and then obviously you can calculate the contribution as well so then you find out the value of a and from the value of a you then find out the radius you use the formula for fcc r equal to root 2a by 4 you replace the value of a over here and you get your final answer right okay so uh, the next thing that you need to know is bragg's law this is again very important n lambda equal to 2d sin theta so it looks like a simple equation but uh, there are questions that in relation like uh, that could be asked in relation like one after the other like where bragg's law is also there and some other concept is also involved i'll talk about those questions um, so over here i just need to tell you that lambda is nothing but your wavelength right d is the interplanar distance it's a distance i'll talk about it later sine theta is the angle all right the angle uh, by which it gets diffracted so generally this kind of formula is used in xrd xrd patterns xrd diffraction so i'll talk about xrd diffraction over here i've written xrd patterns and i've given you this is very very important a lot of questions especially in gate and csi net exam are asked from this particular um uh, question and many people are not able to answer many students are not able to answer so i'll discuss this in a bit, bit detail even though this is a crash course but this requires a bit of exp explanation so i'll explain this concept uh, but let me talk about the other concepts first okay so this is the bragg's law and lambda equal to 2d sine theta so i'll now just rub this off right 
okay uh, so i just need some space um okay so what is uh, n over here n is nothing but the order of the reaction so generally whenever you are given some question on the basis of bragg's law you will be given it's a first order bragg's law equation or it's a second order bragg's law equation or it's a third order bragg's law equation so the order signifies the value of n so if it's a second order then n equal to 2 if it's a third order then n equal to 3 right okay so i'll just rub this off now okay So now we talk about interplanar distance. So this is the formula for interplanar distance. Uh, this is the formula, right? This is the formula. D H K L equal to A upon under root H square plus K square plus L square. Now what is this H K L? H K L is nothing but it represents the Miller indices, right? So Miller indices. I hope you know. If you don't know, I don't want to explain it over here because it's a crash course. Uh, it's a very simple thing. It's just the reciprocal of the lattice points. So for example, my lattice points are one by two. 1 by 3 and 1 by 4 so the miller indices will be 2 3 and 4 right the miller indices will be 2 3 and 4 so this is nothing but the miller indices are reciprocal of the lattice point whatever point it is there on the crystal right so um, why do we take the reciprocal because it's more convenient rather than dealing with fractions it's more convenient to deal with whole numbers and that's why we take the miller indices right so over here if for example D is the interplanar distance, right? D H K L. So let's say we have some plane D one one one, okay? And we need to find the interplanar distance. Then edge length of the crystal will be known or given to us. So we, edge length upon square of all these values. This is your basically h. H is also one. K is also one. L is also one. So you replace one square plus one square plus one square, and you get the value. Now remember one thing. This is where this formula is very basic everyone would have been knowing this formula but they don't know the uh, concept behind it because this formula is only applicable to a cube and a cube has all the three sides equal a equal to b equal to c right the edge the height the width and the length of a cube all are equal right so that is why this formula is applicable but in case that is not the case in case we have a monoclinic monoclinic crystal system all right in case we have a monoclinic crystal system so in case of a monoclinic monoclinic crystal system what happens is that there a and a is not equal to b is not equal to c that is height is different width is different and length is different then you cannot use this formula this formula was only applicable to a cube that's why you had a upon under root h square plus k square plus l square but over here this becomes a formula 1 by d h k l whole square equal to h upon a whole square plus k upon b whole square plus l upon c whole square so you have to take all you have to take into consideration all the three edge lengths all the three edge lengths right because you have to take into consideration the height the width and the length right all the three into consideration and that's why this becomes a formula if we have say a system like um, uh, tetragonal system tetragonal system right in tetragonal system what happens two sides are equal and the third side is not equal so a equal to b not equal to c so in that case we can write it as this 1 by d h k l whole square equal to h square plus k square upon a square so because two edge lengths are equal so we can write two miller indices and then upon a square plus l, l square by c square so this is how you write so this is applicable for tetragonal system this is applicable for systems where all the three sides are unequal like triclinic or monoclinic right um, or orthorhombic also orthorhombic also a not equal to b not equal to c whereas this was the formula that i had written over here was only ap applicable to cubic systems or where a equal to b where all the three sides are equal right uh, like uh, there's one more system i think rhombohedral rhombohedral yeah right rhombohedral is also a equal to b equal to c right so just be careful of this particular thing all right so we have discussed interplanar distance and we have discussed bragg's law now i was telling you the application of bragg's law so sometimes what happens is the interplanar distance we need to find out we need we have been given the value of edge length and we have given we have been given the miller indices of the plane so let's say the miller indices of the plane have been given to us as uh, two three four and the edge length is given to us so then we need to find out the value of d first because miller indices is given to us and the edge length is given to us then we find out the value of d then we replace the value of d over here to find out whatever is asked so sometimes this is how they are related bragg's law and interplanar distance all right next we need to talk about is um, again a very important topic 
and this is a pure mugging up topic there's nothing as such you can do about it you need to mug up and that is you need to know all these seven uh, systems and the relation between the angles and the relation between their edge lengths right so generally i write, like to write it this way why because see triclinic monoclinic and orthorhombic a not equal to b not equal to c a not equal to b not equal to c a not equal to b not equal to c in these three cases that's why i've written them on the top in the bottom two cases cubic and rhombohedral a equal to b equal to c a equal to b equal to c so this way it becomes easy easy to remember so that's why i've written these three on top which where all the three edge lines are not related in, in the bottom i've written two systems where all the edge lines are equal and in between there are two systems tetragonal and hexagonal where a equal to b but not equal to c so this is the easy easiest way to remember this kind of table right so once you have the edge lengths in mind then you go for angles and this is pure mugging up there's no kind no relation as such uh, that i could find only that in cubic and rhombohedral alpha equal to beta equal to gamma that is all the three angles are also equal in both the cases just that in cubic all the angles are 90 degree that is much obvious that is very obvious right all the three angles are um sorry just a second yeah sorry yeah so all the three angles are equal to 90 degree and uh, over here all the three angles are not equal to 90 degree that's the only difference in cubic and rhombohedral so this you can weigh in triclinic all all the three sides are in unequal and all the three angles are also unequal so this is how you can remember right also you need to know the symmetries in these crystals that i have not written down but that is also very important that you need to know the symmetries in crystals like uh, which of these uh, crystals has in center of inversion which one of them has plane of symmetry uh, you know all right which of them has um, a rotational symmetry so you also need to know all the symmetry elements that are relevant to this crystal system so there's a whole table that will you will find in ma many books um, so you have to go through the, those table like in purisharma pathania you'll find a good table I think on solid state chapter only so just go through the index solid state chapter and go through all the symmetry elements as well this is particularly important for gate and CSR net aspirants if you are from jam um, I, I don't think symmetry is as important um, as for CSR net and gate aspirants all right okay so this is all this is what we have discussed crystal systems and next what we are going to discuss is um, next what we are going to discuss is contribution now what exactly is contribution and for contribution i have a rubik's cube in front of you right so this is a rubik's cube and if it's at the corner then the contribution is one by eight so let's say we have an atom which is at the corner of a cube so let's say we'll take one corner okay i'll try and zoom in a bit so let's say we have this corner over here right this corner this i marked i hope you are able to see this is the corner so how is the contribution one by eight see this is shared by this crystal this one yellow one this atom is shared by this yellow cube this uh, blue cube right this white cube and this green cube so it is shared by four cubes plus there will be four cubes in front of this also in front of this white also there will be one cube in front of this green also there will be one cube right so in front of this uh, yellow also there will be one cube and in front of this blue also there will be one cube so there will be eight cubes in total and that is why the contribution will be one by eight all right so the contribution of one atom in a corner will be one by eight what about edge edge is one by four so let's say again i'll take this cube and let's say we are talking about this edge the one on the blue one right this edge so how how many cubes will it be shared by it's being shared by this yellow cube and blue cube so there are two cubes and then there'll be two cubes in front of this also in front of this blue cube also there'll be one cube and in front of this yellow cube also there'll be one cube so it will be shared by four cubes and that is why the contribution by edge is one by four right what about face face means in the center of a face of a cube so let's say the face we i am talking about this face the green one right this face so it's in the center of the face of a green cube so how many crystals uh, cubes will be will it be shared by it will be shared by first this cube uh, the one the green cube and then there'll be in front of this green cube also there'll be one cube in front of it right there'll be one cube in front of this green cube also so it will be shared by two cubes and body centered contribution is one that means body center is basically inside the cube so it is not being shared by any other cube because it's right in center of that cube so that is why the contribution of that body center is one all right 
so yeah so this is about contribution then you need to know about defects uh, defects like short key defect frankel defect and you have to remember that in short key defect um, you know the, um, the the neutrality is maintained right and the density decreases because uh, one anion also leaves its lattice and one cation also leaves its, leaves its lattice so in short key defect basically your uh, density decreases so you need to know defects as well as the relation to density so in short key defect your density decreases while in frankel defects your density remains the same only that uh, you know some of the uh, some of the ions occupy the interstitial site and that is why uh, there is there is some kind of defect because the lattice points are vacant but no anion or cation has left the crystal that is why the density in frankel defects is same whereas in short key defects the density decreases then you also need to know about some other defects as well like f centers and all that so just go through any uh, article or in, through any book and just read about defects then you need to know about semiconductors p type semiconductors n type semiconductors all right uh, also you need to know about the coordination numbers in different kind of crystal systems like woodzite antifluoride crystal systems so these are some uh, rare crystal systems that are little different little odd from the other crystal systems and you need to know the coordination numbers in those crystal systems like for example zns caf2 right calcium difluoride zinc uh, sulfide so you need to know the uh, so zns is basically woodzite crystal system and caf2 is antifluoride crystal system so you need to know the coordination numbers of fluorine and calcium similarly in woodzite also you need to know the coordination numbers really well so this is all about your contribution now this has been a particularly long video and i do not want the crash course video to go at to a very long time so this it's already a very long video so this concept is actually very important and it's going to take a lot of time to explain so this exactly would not be would not be a part of the crash course i'll very soon upload a video on this on this concept as well because i told you it's very important very soon as in the in four four to five hours after this video or the next day i promise this that by next day maximum by the next day i will upload the video discussing about the xrd patterns because this is a very important topic right i do not want to make it as a part of crash course because i'll explain it very fast and you will not be able to understand because this concept requires some time so i'll explain it in detail properly uh, but for that i'll have to make another video right if you are interested in solving questions based on these formulas that we have discussed i will i will give you a link to my unacademy profile over here just click on this link and go to my unacademy profile and follow me i'll be very soon uploading questions on solid state over there the interface of unacademy is really good because things are already written down and the videos are very short 8 to 12 minutes so i can help you uh, with different kind of questions and it will take less of your time because the things will be already written down and it will also take less of my time as well so it will be beneficial to both of us uh, so that's why i've decided to upload questions on that particular on my unacademy profile all right so do go go there and follow me if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and do comment if you like this concept of crash course and please share it among share share it uh, among your friends and thank you so much for watching all the very best for your coming exams